A real teacher is one that will uh, turn you into an independent Muslim that can practice your, you know, that you can practice your Islam without having to rely on your teacher in a debilitating way. Assalamu alaikum. Got a question from Khawla over Facebook. And my Facebook page link is in the description for those of you who use Facebook and would like to send me things over there. Um, she wants to know, uh, I, want, I, I wanted to know your opinion regarding choosing and having a sheikh. Is it necessary to have one? How should one go about it? The notion of having a sheikh is alien to modern day Algerians, albeit the tradition was strong before it collapsed upon French colonization. I'm also not sure I want to pledge allegiance to a sheikh. I would like to have a mentor though. I would appreciate your thoughts and advice. Salam. Um, I believe you need to have a teacher, at least one. I would recommend if you can gain access to multiple teachers, that would be the most ideal thing. Um, with regards to a sheikh and pledging allegiance, you know, the called bay'ah. Um, here are my thoughts on this. I'm not, I don't really subscribe to the idea that you need to pledge allegiance and give up your free will to somebody, regardless of who that somebody is. Um, some, some of the Sufi tariqas like to liken the Shaykh's position with almost uh, a prophetic type of position. At the end of the day, after, at least from a Sunni perspective, there is no infallibility after the Prophet If the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is present with us right now, I would pledge allegiance immediately. But anybody other than him, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do that. But that doesn't mean you become an autodidact or just go off on your own. Um, you have to recognize your age, you have to recognize how much life experience you have and how much you've been practicing Islam versus somebody who has dedicated their life to the tradition and tried to put it into practice. Um, so you need to have a teacher. This tradition is not something that you can pick up from books. Islam is not something you can just go read a book and voila, there you go, you have it. Um, it's, it's something that has been transmitted over this, uh, the millennia, over centuries, uh, through generations, uh, with people that were sincere to it, that wanted to apply it as best as they could. And one of the things that gets transmitted, aside from the um, academic aspect of it, is the comportment. You know, the way that somebody carries themselves. The Prophet Sallallahu changed people's uh, state just by his presence alone, just by being there. Without even saying anything, people will be transformed. That aspect of the tradition, the non-verbal, non-rational, it's not irrational, it's the non-rational aspect of the tradition gets transmitted through the teachers. So, if you have a number of teachers, because you know the Prophet said, "Let ummati ala dalala," that my ummah, my my Muslim followers, they're not all going to gather upon a misguidance. So that's why I don't want I don't want to follow a single person. I don't you know pledge allegiance to a single person. If you have multiple teachers, if one of them er uh, goes into error, well, you have others that can keep that in check. So if you find somebody having a kind of an odd opinion. You have other teachers that can kind of pull you back and say like actually this is the established one. And others, if they have a mistake then a bunch of others can correct them. So if you have multiple teachers that's the most ideal thing if you have access to that. Um, but at the very least you should have one primary teacher. Somebody that you go and study and get your religious education from. Um, how do you go about choosing a sheikh? Well, you will notice that somebody who's uh, really sincerely concerned about your state and your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will be their primary focus. They're always talking about, they're always bringing you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always bringing you back to the Quran, always bringing you back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you find them almost never trying to voice um, uh, an opinion or a thought without backing it up with something from the tradition. Um, you'll notice that it's not for any ulterior motives. If you're a sister, a khawl is a sister. So for the sisters out there, try to find female teachers. Um, I really think it's a bad idea for you to, uh, you know, have just a male teacher and dedicate all your time and, and existence to that male teacher. Male-female relationships 
the more you are intimate with your um, you're almost sharing the thing with the relationship between the teacher and a student is you're sharing your innermost thoughts your uh, existential condition with that person and I think there is a, a bit of a danger you're treading on dangerous grounds when you are sharing that with somebody from the opposite sex because the lines can get blurred and you might confuse your admiration for infatuation um, and the same thing goes for the male teacher as well so I really would recommend that you if for the sisters out there try to just you know find yourself female teachers there's plenty of them especially in in uh, the UK uh, those because most of the audience that's watching this is the UK and the States there are plenty of female teachers in the UK and in the US and if you're not finding one it's because you haven't really dedicated the time to go and find one and look for one they're around I mean I found teachers in my own locality that were kind of hidden gems you know they, they don't like to make themselves known like that uh, it's through striving and, and looking for them that I was able to find so you should have a teacher because I can't tell you how many times I would read something in the tradition and I would think it means something and then I would go and run it with my teacher and then it gets corrected and then you get told actually that's not they get I could see why you thought that but actually bigger picture context this was written in this particular uh, fashion and this author has this particular way of writing and therefore it explains this explains that and if you bring this other thing that they wrote and so they teach you I mean a teacher a real teacher is one that will uh, turn you into an independent Muslim that can practice your you know that you can practice your Islam without having to rely on your teacher in a debilitating way that's a real teacher a real teacher will set you free a real teacher will make you realize the meaning of the verse وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam," that we have ennobled the son of Adam because at the end of the day when you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment you're not going to be able to blame anybody else but yourself and your teacher I mean if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you in the Quran يَوْمَ يَفِرُ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مِرْئٍ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يغني. That on a day when you flee from your brother and sister you flee from your wife, your spouse, your husband and your children you flee from your mother and your father every individual will have their own affair to, to contest with so the way that you should approach should I have a teacher is well first of all find somebody that is well trained in the tradition connected through chains of transmission uh, that has a connection that's not off on their own doing their own thing uh, without any uh, counsel from other teachers and other fellow students of knowledge um, and you see the manifestation of their practice in their being um, you will find that such people are very transformed and very transmor transformative. Someone who makes you become a better person. Um, that's how you go about choosing a sheikh and choosing a teacher. Um, these are just some random thoughts. I mean, I, there's a reason why I call this scattered thoughts. I'm just doing these like kind of one take. So I hope this kind of helps you a little bit. Yeah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum. So... Now you've seen some of the videos. I'm going to be trying to post these scattered thoughts, I'm actually going to call it, because they're just scattered thoughts, um, as often as possible. I'm trying to go for a minimum of four times a week, but I'm trying to build this platform So on YouTube. So I'm hoping that if you enjoy this content, that you would subscribe, like, comment below, and uh, share this video. And uh, tell your mommy, tell your daddy, tell your pops, tell your grandpa, tell your grandma, tell everybody. Um, if there is any benefit that can be derived from these, I would really appreciate it if you can spread it.